When I start a photo restoration, the first thing I like to make sure is that the photo has a good range to it. When you study photography, uh, you learn that a good photograph has a few areas of nice dark darks and a few areas of really good white highlights, and everything else has a good range of grays throughout. And um, in this photograph, you can see there aren't very many very dark, dark areas. Probably this area is the darkest. But even then, that's probably on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the darkest, being pitch black. I would make that about an 8. You can also see that there's not very many light, light areas. There's no white in the entire area, um, in the entire photograph itself. So a good photograph would have a little bit of white uh, highlights to it and also some very dark darks. One common thing that happens to old photographs is that they fade over time. And even in um, uh, modern digital uh, photography, <clears throat> it can't always capture the best range of darks and lights. But once you bring it up in Photoshop, there's a way of adjusting this. So to do this, for, to start off, we'll go up to Image go down to adjustments and you can adjust your range by adjusting the levels in uh, Photoshop so we'll click on that and it'll bring up this dialog box and we'll move it so we can see our image now the levels are will um, map out uh, as you can see on this mountain range the amount of lights and darks that we have on this end, we have our, it's called the black end. It measures the uh, amount of blacks that we have. On this end, <clears throat> it measures the amount of highlights and white areas that there are. And in the middle, you can see the amount of grays that we had. And like I said, there's not very many uh, total blacked out areas. And so you can see that this area is empty. And there's not too many very light white areas. And so you can see that this area is very low, but there are lots of gray areas. So uh, to adjust this, we want to have our, our, um, our photograph to have some dark darks. So we'll move this dark area, the black arrow, <coughs> by clicking and dragging it towards the center. And you can see our document starts to become very darker as we move it in and out. I can move it all the way down and you can see it gets very, very dark, almost to the point where you can't see anything. But for a good photograph, you see this mountain range in the center, and every photograph will have a, a different kind of level of mountain range. I call it mountain range because that's what it looks like. And we'll want to move this dark arrow, the black arrow, right to the base, right where it begins at. And so now you see there's nice dark areas um, under, um, underneath usually the folds of the skin or underneath the hat or shaded areas. The same is true for the white. So we'll want to click on the white arrow and move it in towards the lighter area. And again, if you keep moving it, you can see it comes very, very white and washed out. Almost, you can blow out the entire photograph. But we want to put this at the very base of the other side. Right about there is good enough too. Now automatically you can see our photograph is starting to pop right out. Additionally, we, we, uh, you can see we lost some detail, so we want to adjust our grays and move this back and forth until we can see a lot more detail in it, but still not be washed out. So right about there, you can still see, just make out his left lapel, and you can see the good folds in her dress. Right about there. And so now you see it has a lot uh, better range of, of uh, blacks and whites, lights and darks, and middle tones in between. So I'm going to click on OK. And let me go to Edit and Undo. And you can see what it looked like before and after. One more time. This is what it looked like before. You can see uh, the, the people were very grayed and there wasn't very much darks and very many lights. But now when we adjust the levels, it pops right out. You can see the it, it almost uh, becomes like new. Except now we got to use our tools to get rid of the blemishes and some of the marks that are on the paper itself. But for these, you mainly want to go to Image, Adjustments, and down to Levels. Additionally, you can go to Curves. Let me show you this one real quick. And this is, does the same thing. Except you have a line going from the bottom to the top and you can click on that line and drag it and it's a little more dynamic 
in the uh, amount of movement that you can do. In general, I don't use curves, but you can get some very good results, uh, especially on color photographs. And as you can see, I, I, it bends around, and as I click and add to it, you can get some just really wild stuff from the curves. But for this one, we're not going to use that. The main thing you need to use is Image, go down to Adjustments, and use the levels. And now you can even see our levels have uh, spread back out, and you get a good mountain range that covers all the way across our entire area of lights and darks. 